Hey Facebook, how y'all doing? Give me two minutes while I share this out to our lovely group. Get out of here, man. Um, let me share this out. How you guys doing today? I'm doing pretty good. Got no complaints. Let's go over to Instagram. Instagram. Hi, babe. Guys, Toby wants to be seen, apparently. Hi, Tobe. Say hi to everybody. Okay. Let me Hey guys, hi. I'm just starting up Instagram. Give me one minute, okay? Hi everybody. As you come in, say hi. Let me know where you're joining from. Hello Instagram. Let me uh put this title in. How y'all doing over there Facebook? Uh, all right. Yay, we are ready to go. Hey, Tanya. Hi, Phenomenal Chefs. King Tech Services. How's everybody doing? Y'all, um, for those who are coming in and those who um, will be re-watching this uh, later, on Thursday, I'm going to be going live with King Tech Services 18, trying to get y'all ready for 2020 Texas and giving y'all some business tips. So if you're not following King Tech Services 18 already, make sure that you follow her right now. Uh, we are getting started in about three minutes. Um, we got some cool stories today. We got some black history for you. Um... Last night, yo, guys, if you missed the last part of Logos 101, you, you really missed it. Guys, Martine gave us such good information. Um, if you missed Logos 101 and you are at the you are trying to rebrand your business or you're you're at the beginning stages of business and you don't know where to start with your brand, one of the first places you need to start is with a logo. And Martine over the last four weeks has been giving us instructions on, you know, the different types of logos, how to use them based on what business you're in, what you need to go to a designer with, what you should expect from your designer, picking colors, all that stuff. She gave us a great breakdown. That entire series is $79. Um, if you go to the link in my bio, linktree forward slash NPL consulting firm. So if you need some schooling on some logos, go get the logos one-on-one training. Um, Yes. Ooh, the stories that we talked about today. We talked about. Okay. I want to make sure that I mention everything. Uh, King Tax Services said it was great. What was her handle again? I was multitasking as I watched you guys. She is at Seed Box Digital. Y'all follow Seed Box Digital for all um, of your branding needs. If you need info on logos, things like that, go follow Seed Box Digital. It is headed by my colleague Martine Mango. Um, she is the founder and CEO of that company. She has 15 years of experience in uh, <clears throat> communications and marketing and branding. So she knows what she's talking about. You're welcome. All right. We're getting started in about one minute. Yes. Thank you, Phenomenal Chef. Seedbox Digital. Let me put on, let, let me get into hair and makeup for the show. <laughs> My chapstick. <laughs> ah! mm. You know, we are, we are big production over here. We got lights. We got makeup. We got sound. <laughs> Just kidding. All right. So we are getting started very soon at 8.05. I need you guys to share this out to your people, okay? Um, yes. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six stories to get through today. <laughs> All right. Um... Yes, I'm very excited, guys. I'm really excited about Thursday with King Tax Services. Um, excited about, oh, EIN, um, my EIN workshop, y'all, is, uh, check out some emails for that. 
All right, it is 8.05. Now it's time to share out. Let me start my recording device and we will get it started, okay? All right, welcome, welcome, welcome. Happy Tuesday, everybody. Happy Tuesday, everybody. Welcome to MPL Legal Dish. This is my Monday through Thursday broadcast where I teach business and legal concepts using pop culture and celebrity news. Who am I? I'm Natalie Pierre-Lewis. I'm the host of the show, and I'm the owner and operator of MPL Consulting LLC, a business formation firm. What that means is I help people like yourself get your business paperwork together. If you need help with things like EIN numbers, DUNS numbers, contracts, brand protection, hiring employees, operating agreements, partnership agreements, um, just securing the, securing your business foundation, your legal foundation, making sure that your business is legit. You're not just running it from an Instagram account and a cash app account. I help you get that foundation together. Why am I qualified? So happy you asked. I'm a licensed attorney, have been one for 14 years in accounting. I've started multiple businesses for myself and others, both online and offline. I've had many careers in the realms of entrepreneurship, the law, education, Hi Miss Whitney, hospitality, and administrative support. And most important, I'm very passionate about making business and legal education as accessible to everyone as possible. Not everybody has the time, the money, or the desire to go to business school or to law school, but so many of you have amazing business ideas. Hi, MJ. And um, if you're going to make it in business, there's just some things that you need to know. Thank you, Miss Whitney. Um, and that's why I'm here. I'm here to help y'all facilitate that. Um, so if you would like to see how we can work together to get your business foundation, um, you know, solid, go to Linktree forward slash NPL Consulting Firm, and there you can connect with me in multiple ways. You can schedule a free 15-minute consultation if you are a first-time client. Um, as well, I have a Tuesday special. If you need a little bit more time, you get 25 minutes for $25. You can go to Linktree forward slash NPL Consulting Firm. You can download my free business launch cheat sheet that will help you get your dream business started in seven days or less. You can also um, book, no, you can also subscribe to my YouTube channel and my podcast where I put where I put the replays of this show up um, pretty much every day. Um, and you can also book your one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions. If you need a one-on-one, -on -one, an hour long with me where we get your stuff settled, you can get that as well. All of that is located at Linktree forward slash MPL Consulting Firm. King Tax Services said, bam, no social media or cash app account. And you, the thing is, it's not saying that you can't have those, but you shouldn't be relying solely on those. Okay. All right. Now that we've talked about my stuff, let's move on to the show. If you're new, just in case, you know, if you're if you're a regular, just sit back and relax. For those of you who are new, the way that this show works is I pull stories from celebrity news, from pop culture, from regular news, things that come into my inbox, things that you guys send to me. Um, and I pick those that have uh, lessons that we can learn as business owners and we discuss them. We discuss them. I don't talk to you and y'all just listen. We have a discussion. So if you're new here, I, I, hi, Lisa J. Lisa J. I want you guys to participate. If I ask a question, I want an answer in the box. If I tell you to put an emoji or a letter in the box, I want to see it because I want to make sure that y'all are getting this, that y'all are paying attention. All right. So if we are ready, let me see a couple of readies in the comments so I can start. We got about six stories to go through today. I'm very excited about the first two. Y'all, it's Black History Month, and we are starting off with some black excellence on today. Thank you, Lisey J, for the ready. Thank you, Miss Whitney, for the ready. Thank you, Phenomenal Chefs, for the ready. We got three readies, y'all. Okay, so first story we're talking about like i said we're talking about black excellence today all right thank you king tax services it is black history month y'all and while we should celebrate black history all year round this month is super special so today someone sent me a story and i wanted to send it to and i wanted to share it with you guys high course prep academy because it is a great uh tie-in of um protecting your work and black history so has anybody ever heard of Lonnie Johnson? If you know somebody named Lonnie Johnson, give me an L. And if you have heard of Super Soakers, give me an SS in the comments. So if you know who Lonnie Johnson is, give me an L. And if you know what a Super Soaker is, give me an SS. Miss Whitney does not know who Lonnie Johnson is. That is okay. Oh, hey. Hi, Be Captivating. How are you? Okay, so I got some people who know what super soakers are, but nobody seems to know who Lonnie Johnson is. Well, y'all, 
I'm going to tell you of, of you know, uh, like I said, Black History Month. We have Black Excellence on the docket on today. Thank you, MJ, for the ready. Thank you, Angela, for the ready. Lonnie Johnson um, was a nu is a nuclear engineer. He was also a Tuskegee University PhD grad. And he was a NASA scientist. So Lonnie had, Lonnie was a smart gentleman, okay? Um, <clears throat> Lonnie sued um, Hasbro. Hi, Busy Peach. So Lonnie sued Hasbro for breach of contract in 1996 um, because he, uh, hi, hi guys, yes. Because he created, um, Lonnie was a designer. He was an engineer. His thing was he, he built things. Yes. Yes, Miss Whitney. He created um, designs of the Super Soaker. And Lonnie had developed two designs of the Super Soaker. One was called the End Strike and the other was called, Hi Brittany, and the other was called Dart Tag, the Dart Tag, okay? So... He invented these way back in the 90s. Um, and he had an agreement with the company that made uh, Super Soakers. I think it was Nerf. Um, and he was supposed to get 2% of the revenue for their three-dimensional products and 1% of the revenue for their two-dimensional product. So when we talk about a three-dimensional product, we mean something like a toy, like... Um, this thing right here is a three-dimensional object, okay? Um, something like something like this would be a two-dimensional object, okay? So he was getting, he was supposed to get 3% for this, I mean 2% for this and 1% for this, okay? But Nerf wasn't paying him his money. Um, so he licensed the, the, the designs to Nerf in 1989 and they generated more than $200 million in sales in two, um, in, in just two years. Um, so they made buku bucks because he let them use his designs. However, they were not paying him his royalties from about 2000, seven to 2012, they were not paying Lonnie his money. Um, so Lonnie sued because Lonnie was not only a very smart man, Lonnie, um, in, in the fact of his education, Lonnie was smart in protecting his genius. Lonnie has over 80 patents to his name and he has about 20 patents pending. So Lonnie is out here doing the things. And Lonnie said, hey, you took my designs, you made money, you were supposed to pay me, and you didn't pay me. So Lonnie has been in court for years with Nerf trying to get his money. Um, and it is estimated that Super Soaker, based on his designs, made over a billion dollars over the span of time. Um, so Lonnie finally got his money um, a couple of years ago, I believe. And how much do you guys think he got out of this case? If, um, I want y'all to give me some guesses. How much do you think Lonnie got for his patents on the Super Soaker de designs? And I want to thank Brittany J.P. Reese for sending me this story for me to talk about. Um, but how much do you think Lonnie got? Because Nerf, uh, Nerf made a billion dollars. Um, King Tax Services said a thousand dollars. Girl, no, 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 no. That is disrespectful. How much you, 100K? No, no, no. Of course, Prep Academy said 500 million. Okay, we shooting a little bit too high. <laughs> 6K? No. Lonnie Johnson got $72.9 million, ladies and gentlemen. Um, Tabitha Duhart said he graduated from Lily B. Williamson, Mobile, Alabama. Go Mighty Lion. So I'm assuming that you are, that is your alma mater because <laughs> you repping it hard. Um. King Tax Service said 10,000 K phenomenal said a hundred million. Lonnie got $72.9 million. Lonnie got $73 million. Y'all he can have chicken for the rest of his life. He can have cheese and bacon on his burger for the rest of his life. And the reason why Lonnie got $73 million is because Lonnie protected his genius. Yes. Of course, Prep Academy said, dang, Lonnie need a wife. I don't know if he's married, girl. You better look him up. 
Um, but this is why it's important to protect your work because had Lonnie not had patents on his work, which proved that he owned these designs, he might still be in court fighting this, or they might have, they might have, uh, you know, kind of, um, or they might have had an argument that put him out of court. MJ Jackson gets 75 million, a little bit too high. He got 73 girl, but Lonnie Johnson is rolling in the dough because Lonnie Johnson had his patents together. He said, Nerf, run me my coin. Nerf didn't want to run him his coin. So he took him to court and now he's $73 richer. So Lonnie, we put our hats off to you. You are black excellence today. All right. Okay. <laughs> and so but that story, I remember hearing about this, uh, I want to say last year or a couple of years ago, but we have another story of black excellence and intellectual property on the docket today. Yes, he did get paid. Okay. So in continuing, yes, the water gun guy, he got $73 million since year 39 because, uh, because of this lawsuit. So Lonnie is eating good for the rest of his life. Um, it's a delay on Facebook. Oh, okay. Thank you for letting me know. Tabitha Duhart. Um, so let me see. Course Prep Academy. Tabitha Duhart wants me to let you know that Lonnie is married. So sorry, girl. He's taken. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry for the delay, Facebook. Um, I will do my best to uh, talk slower so that, you know, we can catch up and things like that. Uh but yes, so Lonnie Johnson, Black Excellence, he invented two, well, not just the Super Soaker, but specific designs of the Super Soaker. He developed the End Strike and the Dart Tag, okay? All right. So we are moving on to our other Black Excellence story that has to do with the title of this, um, th this broadcast. The title of this broadcast is Take Care of Your Trademarks. Does anybody in here know who Marshawn Lynch is? If you know who Marshawn Lynch is, give me an ML in the comments. If you know who Marshawn Lynch is. For those of you who might not know who Marshawn Lynch is, he is a football player. He um, played on the Seattle Seahawks, and he was one of the people who were clutch in, bring, in getting them in winning them the Super Bowl, and he was recently re-signed because the team was doing badly and they re-signed him. Thank you for the ML um, Course Prep Academy. Thank you, Sincere39. Thank you, Angela. Thank you, Miss Whitney. Y'all know who Marshawn Lynch is. Well, aside from football, Marshawn Lynch, oh, thank you, Tabitha. Marshawn Lynch is doing a great job of being a businessman. If you didn't know, Marshawn Lynch has various ventures um, that he does and he also gives back to the community a lot. And uh, but but one of the things that Marshawn Lynch is really good at is protecting his work. So Marshawn Lynch, we've talked about him a couple of times on the show. Miss Whitney said he sure is. Um, and he has a couple of trademarks. He has one called Beast Mode that we talked about because someone was trying to infringe on his trademark. Yes, he is getting money. And um, he had another one. I forget the name of it, but he recently filed for another thing having to do with, with Beast in it. And I can't remember it right now. But Marshawn Lynch has just filed a trademark for two more phrases. He recently did a press conference. It's considered to be possibly his final press conference. Um, hi, Cal 30 Wins, um, Wilson. And in that press conference, he was, um, you know, imparting wisdom to the younger football players and, you know, telling them to take care of their financial situations and to take care of their mental health. And the phrases that he used were, in terms of taking care of it, your your financials, he said, take care of your chicken. I remember I saw him on the stage, he was like, take care of your chicken, right? And he also said, take care of your mentals. So, yes, he said, take care of your chicken, take care of your mentals. So Marshawn has trademarked these phrases or at least filed the applications for these phrases. He is already selling shirts with the phrases. I'm sure you can go to his Beast Mode Apparel store and find a shirt that says, take care of your chicken, Hi, Ron 1999 or, um, or take care of your mentals. Um, and he is securing the bag. It's for a clothing line. 
And I'm very, I'm very interested to see what Marshawn Lynch does down the line because he's really invested in his community. He started a phone, a low cost phone service for people who are indigent that is uh, very affordable in his area. He also is working. Um, I believe he's working on some type of mental health facility, if I'm not mistaken. But he's high low, high Lorenzo. But he's very involved in um, you know making things better but he's also a very shrewd businessman I believe I read that um, even like he he did not spend any of his NFL money while he was in the NFL all the money that he spent was like from endorsements and things like that so he knows how to how to save money so congratulations to you Marshawn Lynch you are also black excellent on today ding 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 all right so do we have any questions about Lonnie Johnson or Marshawn Lynch? They are our black excellence of today. I'm going to try and have more black excellence spots throughout the month. Um, if y'all have stories you want to send me, please do because I can't catch them all. Um, but yes. So if we are good on Lonnie Johnson and Marshawn Lynch, we're going to move on to our next stories. Okay. Um, Okay, our next story, this is a perfect... Oh, before we move on to that, want to remind you guys, um, Logos 101, we finished the last of our Logo series last night, y'all. Martine laid it down for us over the last four weeks. If you need help, yes, if you need help rebranding or, you know, figuring out the, the, the message that you want to send through your logo for your business, if you can't do it on your own, because I, rem I remember the first time I picked my logo, I picked the first one I picked... It was like a little flower and I made it purple. And when my friend asked me why I picked it, I said, because it's pretty. That's not why you, that's not how you pick a logo. Your logo represents your business when you are not out there to meet people. So your logo needs to, needs to, you know, stand out. It has to have certain qualities that represent your business that you want to express to other people. And there is a science to that. So Martine has been laying it out for us for the last four weeks. And if you want that four week training, you can get it right now for $79. Go to the link in my bio, link tree forward slash MPL consulting firm. Okay. All right. Now on to our next stories. So we finished with Marshawn Lynch. Um, we have another NFL story. Do we have any Jets fans in the house? Any New New Jersey, New York? I don't know where the Jets play. Um, but any Jets fans in the house? And if you know who the Jets, what state the Jets are from, please let me know in the comments. Um, <clears throat> Yes. So, uh, yeah. So we're talking about the New York Jets. If if anybody know who does the Jets, come on, sincere. You're a football person. Help me out here. <laughs> All right. So the reason I'm asking you guys about the Jets is, uh, it's very simple. They're from New York. Okay. Thank you, Angela. Let me know. Um, Zach Berger is from, uh, Zach. Um, uh, no, the Jets play for New York. King Tax Services said she's a Dallas cowgirl. Okay. <laughs> so, apparently the Jets are not a good team. Um, it's cool, since they're no problem. Apparently the Jets are not a good team. Um, so much so that there is a guy named Zach Berger. And he has an online store on Shopify called um, Same Old Jets. Um, that's the name of his store, Same Old Jets. And in that store, he sells shirts. Um, they play in New Jersey. Okay. In that store, Zach Berger, you, you can go to his online store or you could go to his online store and you could purchase shirts that said, make the Jets great again um, or and sell the team. Um, <clears throat> these shirts were made in colors that were similar to the Jets, so green and white. And the font was somewhat similar to the Jets font. Um, NFL got wind of these shirts. Now, Zach was not using any Jets logos. He didn't use the NFL logo. He didn't say Super Bowl. He just used the Jets name. Um, NFL felt some kind of way. They felt like, you know, the way these shirts look and what you're talking about, we feel like people might get it confused. And they contacted Shopify and said, someone is infringing on one of our trademarks. And Shopify shut his store down. They didn't ask no questions. They didn't, they didn't, you know, try and suss stuff out. This NFL came and knocking and Shopify said, oh, really? Okay. This is what happens to a lot of Etsy sellers. Some of you, some uh, Etsy sellers who are out here selling knockoff items. 
If somebody contacts Etsy and tells them that you are selling counterfeit items or that you are infringing on trademarks, if they are the person who owns the trademark, they are not going to ask any questions. They are just going to shut your store down. So this is what happened to Zach. Um, and Zach, uh, he tried to fight back. He contacted Shopify. He was like, why'd you shut my store down? I'm not violating any trademarks. I'm just selling some shirts. And Shopify basically said, look, the NFL was the one who complained. Take it up with them. These, these platforms where you are selling, they are not here to defend you. They are not here to help you. Yes, the, the platforms are useful, but in the, at the end of the day, these companies are here to make money and they don't want no smoke. So if somebody comes and tells them, especially somebody with as big as clout as the NFL comes and says, Hey, somebody's infringing on our trademarks. You need to do something or we're going to take you to court. They're not asking any questions. So this is why you need to be very careful. Now, the shirts that Zach was selling, I don't necessarily think that they violate any of the NFL's trademarks, but the NFL is a larger um, organization with a lot of money and I'm assuming a lot of lawyers. So they have people who are paid to be really aggressive and defend the NFL's marks. So I picked this story to, the, to help y'all understand that just because you get away with something today doesn't mean you'll get away with it tomorrow. Now, I don't necessarily think Zach was infringing, but let's just say he was using the Jets logo or something like that, like some people are doing on these Etsy stores. Y'all are buying fabrics with Louis Vuitton, with Coach, with Gucci, and you out here trying to make products. No, you can't do that because that is infringement and somebody can get your store shut down. So um, stay away from people's logos and it's important to do your research to make sure that you're not infringing on any marks. It's not guaranteed 100% that if you do your research, nobody's going to challenge you because some people are just super aggressive, but there is less likely of a chance for you to get in trouble if you do your research beforehand, okay? So do we have any questions about the Jets or Zach Berger? Or the NFL? Like, what do you think? Do you think the NFL was doing too much? Because the shirts didn't have any logos. The shirts just said, make the Jets great again and sell the team. That's it. Do you guys think that that was enough for the NFL to complain to Shopify? Or do you think that they were overreaching? <clears throat> what do you think? What do you think? What do you think? Oh, yeah. Um. <laughs> so what do you think? I personally think that the NFL was overreaching. Sincere39 agrees with me. He said, yes, doing way too much. Um, but again, they have an entire team of lawyers, and this is their job to go out and defend, all right? Um, and that, that that's just the risk you take being out in business. Somebody with a bigger wallet and a bigger vendetta might come after you, especially if you don't do your research. Course Prep Academy said, I think it was more about their feelings being hurt than overreaching. <clears throat> you think the NFL's feelings were hurt? Because it wasn't the Jets who, who contacted them. It was the NFL. Lisey J said, the NFL is mad the Jets are bad, and this product highlights that. Um, since 39 said, most NFL teams don't pay taxes. They aren't missing any money. Okay, so now I understand what you're trying to say, Course Prep Academy. Lisey J kind of expounded on it. I mean, does the NFL really care if somebody's saying that a, a team is bad? Tabitha said they're doing too much. Like, I know that they don't want people bad-mouthing the NFL and stuff, but if you're just a fan of the game and you're saying that a team is bad, is the NFL that petty? Um, and since they're 39, yeah, you're right. Because you, I think you were the one who told me that th they were a nonprofit organization up until recently, they, they weren't paying that um that money. Jets aren't that bad. Look, I don't know nothing about the Jets. I don't know nothing about no football except some Patriots and Tom Brady. Um, but uh I I guess the NFL just does just want does not want you bad mouthing their teams. Um Busy Peach said, no, it's about missing out on the licensing fees. But there are no licensing fees required because this gentleman was not using any Jets logos. He just literally had the phrase, make the Jets great again. There was no football logo. 
There was no um, NFL logo. Um, the only thing you could say that was similar was the color scheme and maybe the font. That was it. But other than that, like, personally, I don't think the average person would think that this was merchandise that was uh, sanctioned by the NFL or by the Jets. Okay? Um, Since the other said, that's what it is, Natalie. NFL doesn't like to look bad. Well, they're doing a terrible job, okay? <laughs> they got more problems than Zach Berger out here selling some t-shirts. Um, okay, so... Good luck to Zach Berger. I hope he's able to sell his t-shirts again, although I doubt it because the NFL got long money and apparently they are very petty. Um, all right. Next story that we are talking about. Any wrestling fans in the house? I know we talk about wrestling a fair amount here. Um, past or present, I was a past uh, wrestling fan. I used to love, uh, you know, the Hulk and um, Macho Man Randy Savage and the Undertaker and the Paul Bearer and Chris Jericho. They were my people, okay? But, you know, like, I don't watch it anymore, but, you know, I still hold your past fan. I still hold a place in my heart for, for you know, entertainment wrestling, right? And wrestling is actually... A very interesting industry for trademarks because they're always filing trademarks. There's always stories. And today is no exception. We have two WWE stories today. So the first one, uh, if anyone has watched the WWE, I guess within the last couple of years, apparently there was a team there that was um, named the Ascension Team. And the two members were people named someone named Dana Brooke and someone named Victor. Um, now... These wrestlers, they no longer uh, fight for the WWE. They were actually released. So I don't know if they were fired or Wahoo McDaniel King Tax Services. I don't even know who that is. I got to look him up. Um, now, these members of the Ascension team, I don't know if they were fired or if their contracts were up and they just didn't renew. Either way, they were released from the WWE. Here's the thing. The WWE, even though these players no longer work for their organization, they have filed trademarks for their fighting names. Um, so uh, I thought that this was very interesting because it's like, are you? why would the WWE do this? Are you going to take these names and use them on other players? Is that something that is done in wrestling? Because I, I don't remember that ever being done. But why would the WWE trademark names that... Um, that for play, for performers who are no longer with their organization. I'm going to tell you why. Because every time you use that name, the WWE cuts a check. If you notice, we've talked about this before, Dwayne Johnson, formerly, not even formerly known as The Rock, people still call him The Rock. Every time he used The Rock, um, in a movie, he had to cut. He had to cut the WWE a check. That's why he doesn't use The Rock that much anymore. He just uses Dwayne Johnson. Um, Sincere Thirty Nine said, "Yeah, the WWE does that with all their wrestlers, but even the released ones, Sincere Thirty Nine, because they trademarked this after they released the players. It wasn't like they were playing and they trademarked it. They said, oh, well, you don't work for us anymore, but we're keeping the name.'" Okay, um, so that is one. Um, I think that's kind of petty by the WWE. And another um, fighter, his name is Ryback. Um, so apparently he, had, he, he was also a WWE wrestler, but he has not wrestled for them in some years. And he is asking them to let, they have a trademark on his name. They have a trademark on the name Ryback. Now we know that you have to renew a trademark every 10 years. Ryback is asking the WWE to let the trademark lapse because he wants to use his name because he wants to get back into wrestling. He doesn't necessarily want to go back to the WWE, but he wants to get back into wrestling and he wants to use his name. So he's asking the WWE to let this trademark lapse. And this is the power that you have when you have a trademark. You can prevent someone from using their own name. Um... Sincere39 said, remember China? She died a few years ago and she couldn't use that name anymore either. Oh. I didn't know. Wait, was she still wrestling? I know she was doing a lot of reality TV. Yeah, yeah. Um, she couldn't or she didn't want to because the, the Dwayne, 
Dwayne Johnson was using The Rock. He just had to cut the WWE a check. Um, so I, I don't know what China's situation, because I, I didn't keep up with it. I actually forgot that she had passed away. But I don't. was it a matter of they wouldn't let her use it, or she just didn't want to cut the WWE a check? Either way, that's what when somebody owns the trademark, it puts limits on what you can do. Um, Sincere 39 said no, she tried to use it and they shut her down. Wow, that's cold. That is cold. Okay, well, we are going to wish the best for Dana Brooke, Victor, and Ryback. Hopefully, the WWE has a change of heart and lets Ryback get his name back. I don't know why they're trademarking the names of a team that is no longer working for them, but you know, I don't work for the WWE. All right, we have. Ooh, all right. You know what? Okay. So we are going to end here because we are at uh, at time and we have the entire week to go. Since the other night said that's how it is in these in them trademark streets. Yes, it is. These trademark streets are not loyal. Okay. Um, but yeah, so those are the stories that I have for you today. We are going to finish up. We didn't do two stories. We're going to finish them up tomorrow. But we're going to be on for a couple minutes for Q&A and also for some announcements. Um, thank you all for your participation and your energy. I want to remind you that the Logos 101 video series is on sale for $79. If you need to rebrand, if you need to pick, you, if you want a designer, a logo designer, a brand expert to give you the tips to create the, the best image for your business, you want to pick up this training. It is only $79. Working with a logo designer, a reputable one, a digital branding agency is going to cost you much more. And you get the tips on what you need to know to work with a designer, how to choose your colors, fonts, types of logos, all that stuff. So pick that up as well. Um, business Startup Basics, while it is not on sale anymore, it is still available don't give up on your 2020 business um, resolution, all right? It is it is on it is um for sale for $59. You can find those at linktree forward slash NPL consulting firm, okay? Linktree forward slash NPL consulting firm. Um what else? Oh, I'm going to be going live with King Tax Services 18 on Thursday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We are still having our show at 8. But I'm going to be doing an extra live broadcast a little bit earlier. So y'all follow King Tax Services 18. Come hang out with me and her um, Thursday at 7 p.m. Um, what else did I want to tell you guys? Um, yeah, I think that's how it, that that's all that I wanted to talk about. I um, want to say thank you again. Y'all hang out with me night after night. Um, and I really appreciate you. You really keep me going. I look forward to coming and hanging out with you guys Monday through Thursday. Uh, I will be back tomorrow. We will be finishing up these two stories that we have left along with some new ones that I find tomorrow. Y'all, if you find any, um, you know, Black History Month stories that have to do with brand protection or the things that we talk about on this show, please send them to me. You're welcome to King Tax Services. Because I can't catch everything myself, and I love when you guys send me stories. Brittany Reese um, shot Best on the Yard. She was actually the one who sent me this story about Lonnie Johnson. I'm very happy that she did. Um, yeah, so that's all that I have for you tonight. We will be back tomorrow with fresh stories, fresh eyes, fresh energy. Um, and I will talk to you then. Bye, guys.